Well, joining us now, Pulitzer Prize winning associate editor of the Washington Post, Bob Woodward. He is co-author with Robert Costa of the book Peril, and he and Costa broke this story about the text messages and Wow, I'm, I'm not sure where to begin. I guess I'll ask you to choose among two of, of what I think are the biggest takeaways from it. I mean, is this a story about a Ginny Thomas, or is it about a Supreme Court justice potentially being compromised in a decision that he made that he gave absolutely no reason for, and none of the other justices went that way? Well, we're going to find out. I mean, this, this is a story that is starting, but what struck Robert Costa and myself is we we got access to these text messages. I mean, I, when I walked in here with you, you had a look of wonder that I've, frankly, it, over the years, never seen on your it's face. It's just, but you can't, you can't write these text messages and believe in the Constitution. So there's just this massive conflict. And what has happened to this? I think a uh, fairly well-known Republican member of the Republican Party, Jenny Thomas. Yes, well, she's an activist, and yeah. she's, she's entitled to that. She has sure. the First Amendment rights. But here she is playing the role of campaign manager and political right. consultant for the White House, coming in right. and talking about things that... Uh, I mean, there, there is a, a self-righteous tone. I, uh, we're on the moral high road. I mean, Meadows himself says this is a fight of good versus evil. He's and he invokes the name of Jesus, you know, oh King of Kings. God. You're going to, you know, yes. to, 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 to help in this, this um, I guess you have to call it a crusade that they were on. Um, I, so tell me about, the, about Meadows in this exchange. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you read his text? Are they, is he all in with um, Jenny Thomas, who's clearly all in on, you know, let's just overturn this election? Is he all in on that? Is he humoring her at times? Mm -hmm. What is he? Well, I think sometimes, I mean, uh, White House Chief of Staff, I've written about mm -hmm. 15 of them yeah. over the years. There's a lot of incoming. And, uh, but it's that one where he says good versus evil. Exactly. And, and this is the problem we have in our politics. And uh, people who believe, as you point out, Mika, in the Constitution, Constitution's very clear, we'll have the election. Then once we have the election, the Constitution and the Electoral Count Act make it crystal clear, it now goes to the Congress to certify mm -hmm. the winner. And in this process, yeah. it, I mean, it's, it's sacrosanct, it's clear, yeah. it was Vice President Pence who resisted all of this mm -hmm. pressure. But here we have Jenny Thomas not just uh, being part of the pressure campaign, mm. but yeah. herself saying, Release the Kraken. Release what? the Kraken. I know the the mythological release the Kraken. You know Sidney Powell, the the um, and I mean I'm going to call one her one of the Trump lawyers. I'm going to call, call her a wingnut because she I mean, she was the most extreme, most unhinged. By this time. Donald Trump has decided that Sidney Powell is is off the rails, yet Jenny Thomas is still with him. And yes, Jenny Thomas say, oh, make her the face in the lead of this effort. Willie. Yeah, Bob, I mean, she actually reaches out to Meadows to say she does not like the disparagement that she's seen from White House officials <laughs> of God. Sidney Powell. She's got a thing for Sidney Powell. Who knows what it is? I mean, there's so much to point to there. I would also add that when she watched Ginny Thomas, the infamous RNC press conference with Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani, yes, the one where he was sweating hair dye down his cheek, she wrote to Mark Meadows that she was brought to tears by what Rudy was doing in a good way. She was mo so moved by his attempt to overturn the election. The key question, though, as you point out, is whether or not Justice Thomas uh, shares any of these feelings, whether he knew about it, whether it affects his, his decisions to recuse himself or to dissent on the National Archives question. Did you find anything in your reporting, Bob, that showed he shares the views of Ginny Thomas? 
we, we don't know that, and uh, at the same time, the January 6th committee, uh, as demonstrated mm -hmm. by these texts, is very aggressive in going after the full story. I think there's going to be a question, do they want to subpoena Ginny Thomas? Mm. And uh, that is about as delicate, uh, I mean, you can almost hear the air vibrate when you raise that possibility. Just, just How could they not? On that point, though, she does, there is a text in which she refers to a conversation she had with my best friend. Right. Um, how did you read that? Did you well, read had, that as a conversation? He, with he has Trump? called publicly called mm -hmm. her uh, his best friend, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, there's an implication there. But uh, it seems you know, like wanted... she's intonating toward him, but we don't know. Exactly, Jonathan and, Lemire. And as reporters, we want to stick stick to, to the let's facts. Let's get the yeah. story and mm -hmm. let's find out here. But there, there's an audacity uh, in these messages. There is a kind yes. of, uh, at the end, Fervor. she says, America is going to be lost if Biden wins. She attacks Biden and says he's part of the Biden crime family and so forth. I mean, this is what, uh, over the years, we've all seen lots of true believers yeah. on the Republican Party, Democratic Party, left okay. and right. Uh, but these are the people who stay behind the scenes and run campaigns. They are not yeah. out, mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, yeah. uh, negotiating with the White House chief of staff of mm -hmm. this is the messaging, the, the uh, staffing directions. This is the strategy. And she happens to be married to a Supreme Court justice. Jonathan Lemire has the next question. Hey, Jonathan? Bob, good to see you again. Jaw-dropping uh, reporting uh, nicely done. Want to get you to weigh in on something we were talking about a little earlier, which we talk about this Justice Thomas, but also the bind this now puts Chief Justice Roberts in, as he has been so mindful of trying to protect the reputation of the court, trying to keep it above and out of politics, and yet politics has now landed on his doorstep. Yes. Well, I mean, the, this is a difficulty not just for Roberts, but for the whole court. What, what is going on here? What is the obligation? And the, uh, the obligation happily is in the Constitution and the laws. And, uh, and in one of these text messages, believe it or not, she says, well, we should talk to former Nixon aide Monica Crowley, mm -hmm. and she knows how to deal with things like this. <laughs> we know what happened to Nixon. Yeah. And uh, have we forgotten the lessons of Watergate? What were the lessons of Watergate? Don't tamper with and meddle with our election system. We have a system that is held its ground beautifully over the years and to have uh, this to, to see the the passion the the sense of you can only look at this one way mm. uh, you know what what are our, what has happened? I mean, Gene, you've written yeah. about this almost every week. Yeah. Our, uh, the the division in our mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. is so great. Mm -hmm. And it's not just on the right, it's on the left, as we know. And so who's going to find a way wow. to turn down the temperature? Sure. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.